Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul channel, and if you've never watched this channel before and you'd like to know what it's all about, then please do watch my first video where I explain exactly what that means and what I'm doing. And before I begin for today, I'd like to say that may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor before you, Hashem. And I also want to thank some people who have helped me on this journey in my life. And I will have a link to their sites below this video. They are Rabbi Shalom Abersh, Rabbi Lazer Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, and Rabbi Eli Mansour. So in a previous video, I read um, a parak or chapter of Tehillim, Psalms. And I, what I decided to do today, I'm calling Tehillim Treasure tidbits, meaning there's treasures in this wonderful book of Tehillim. This is the one I have from Art Scroll. And uh, as I go through reading Tehillim every day, I found certain sentences and certain phrases that are explained below that are really, uh, really good. So I figured I will do that this time today. So the first one I have is, let's see if I find it here. It's from Perek Nun Vav. And it's Pasuk Yud Aleph, or 11. So that's chapter 57. So the Pasuk reads, Be'elokim ahalel davar bahashem ahalel davar. In Hashem, G-D, we don't say his name, I will praise the word, and in Hashem I will praise the word. So he uses, David Amelch uses two different names for Hashem, Elokim and Yud Kei Vav Kei. So what is this trying to tell us? That Elohim is generally used to refer to Hashem when he is acting with strict justice. So that's Elohim. And then when it's Yud Kei Vav Kei, it means that he's acting with mercy. So what he's trying to say here, that he praises him with both names. So what does this mean? He says that, so that's what Rashi says, that what the difference between Elohim and Hashem and then what Rob Hirsch says is that when Hashem decrees upon me suffering, he explains this, I'm sorry, explains it from David Amelach, when Hashem decrees upon me suffering according to his strict justice or joy in Hashem's mercy, I accept and praise his word and decree. So he's saying that whenever, whatever, whether, whether he decrees upon me suffering according to justice or according to his mercy, um, or joy, then I accept it. So either way, whichever way he works, I'm still accepting it. So he accepts everything that he says. And then the next one, let's see, I'm going to find that here, is from, let's see, this is from Perek Samach Dalit 64, and it is the Pasuk that goes Vayiru Kol Adam Vayegidu Po Al Elokim Uma Asehu Hiskilu. So then fear did all men, and they declared the work of Hashem and his actions they comprehended. So explanation on Vayiru Kol Adam. So it says in here, upon witnessing the divine execution of justice against the sinners, men came to fear Hashem because his actions they comprehended. We are always intellectually capable of comprehending Hashem's deeds and seeing the telltale signs of his handiwork everywhere. It is just that we sometimes need to see an event which makes us fear Hashem in order to jolt us out of our complacent slumber and open our eyes and mind to the plethora of Hashem's deeds which surround us. So what that's saying is that, yeah, Hashem's doing things all the time, but we, we're not always paying attention to it. So sometimes we need what I call a potch. We need a wake-up call to realize... Um, what's going on and what Hashem is doing. So that's important to think about that, like to keep that in the forefront of our mind. Okay, and then let's see. The next one um, that I found very interesting was actually, let's see here if I find where I'm at. <laughs> I have to remember what I'm doing. Okay, so the next one is here, um, chapter Samach Vav, which is 66. We were just in 64, so um, that is Pasuk, let's see if I find where we're talking about, okay, it's Pasuk Yun Bet, which is uh, 22, um, I'm 22, which is 12, excuse me for my horrible math there, 
here kavta enosh l'rashenu banu va'esh uvamayim v'atotienu l'rivaya. So you mounted a mortal over our head. We entered into fire and water, and you brought us out into abundance. So the explanation on banu ba'esh v'amayim, um, it's interesting. It's a very interesting explanation. So fire consumes, water sweeps away. Israel in exile has been subjected to the ravaging flames and rushing floodwaters of torture and oppression, but have neither consumed nor been swept away. That's according to Radak. So then it says, fire and water are the media through which utensils are purged of their impure absorptions. The fire and waters of exile purge Israel of exile's alien and sinful influences, rendering the Jews once again a pure and holy vessel for Hashem's service. So it's very interesting that fire and water is what we use for cleansing, and it's also helping cleanse us of the negativity and the, the alien and sinful influences that have over us. Okay? And then um, the next one um, is also from Samach Vav. Um, let me see. It's the uh, Pasuk, Chaf, the last Pasuk, Baruch Elohim asher lo heisir tefilati v'chasto me'iti. Blessed is Hashem who has turned away, who has not turned away, excuse me, my prayer or his kindness from me. So when it says, asher lo heisir tefilati, that is not turned away my prayer. So Rav Hirsch renders it, who has not withdrawn my prayer. So Hashem has not withdrawn from me my prayer or his kindness. He has given me the strength to soar up to him in prayer, even in the face of the harshest trials. I thank him for the ability he has given me to pray to him in times of crisis. So that's very important that he's giving me the strength. Even though I'm going through a difficult time, I still have the strength to pray to Hashem. Okay. Uh, let's see what is next. Um, the next one I have here is... Um, let's see... Okay, the next one I have here is from Samach Tet. Parak Samach Tet 69, and it's Pasuk. We'll find it. Pasuk Yud Zayin. Aneni Hashem Kitov Chastecha. Kerov Rachamecha Pnei Eilai. Answer me, Hashem, for good is your kindness. According to the abundance of your mercy, turn toward me. So when he says Kitov Chastecha, for good is your kindness, so whatever God's kindness ordains is always good, however harsh it may seem to be. This is something we tend to forget. That everything Hashem does is good. There's nothing outside of good for Hashem. It's how we perceive it differently. So His kindness is always good. Even though it seems harsh to us, it doesn't seem kind. It is actual kindness. So we have to remember that. Um, another one that was very interesting also in, Pasuk, in Perak Samach Tet is, let's see, it's Pasuk. Uh, ki ata, Pasuk Chav Zayin. Ki ata asher hikita radafu. For, for the who, for the one who whom you smote, they persecuted. So this is very interesting. What that means is that Hashem grants the nations certain measures of authority to punish the Jews. This is according to Rashi for their sins. But the nations persecuted the Jews far more than necessary and with savage delight. So what that means is they take that as a precedence where even though Hashem is allowing them to punish us because we've done something that isn't according to His ways, they take advantage of that and add on to it. And that isn't good because eventually they will be punished. They're just a vehicle. They're just a messenger from Hashem. Okay? And then, uh, let's see, the next one um, is going to be from... Ah, this is a good one. From Perak Ayin Zion, and that's chapter 71. And the Pasuk goes, Al tas tash licheni le'ed zikna. Kichlot kochi al ta'azveni. Do not cast me away in time of old age. When failed does my strength forsake me not. So when it's saying about not casting me off, so this is very interesting in that um, there is a sense of urgency, almost desperation, when the elderly people tenaciously grasp Hashem's hand. The decline of health and strength exposes the inability of human resources to overcome adversity and to achieve true fulfillment in life. It is only in the shelter of Hashem's love and protection that true happiness can be found. 
Hashem extends his shelter to those who seek it, regardless of whether they are in the prime of youth or in the lengthy shadow of old age. So it doesn't matter where you're at in your life, in your quote-unquote years that you're here physically. If you reach out, Hashem will be there to help you. Okay? And then the next one, we have a few more to do here, is um, the one in chapter or Perak Ayin Gimel, which is 73. Uh, let's see where it's at here. I need to find it on my page. Um, but as for me, nearness to Hashem is my good. So what does this mean? Nearness to Hashem is my good. When people refer to events as being either good or bad, they're usually describing their perception of these events rather than the nature of the events themselves. But the psalmist uh, declares, nearness to Hashem is my good. When I am loyal and faithful to Hashem, and He is thus near to me, all events are good. Whatever He meets out to me, reward or chastisement, is truly for my benefit. So this is a very good one, because everything that He does is good. So being close to Hashem is the good. So no matter what happens to me, uh, I'm still loyal and faithful. No matter what happens, if, it's, if it seems to be reward or not, I, I will still uh, know that it's for my absolute benefit. And then one more we will have to share with you today is from Perek Ayin Chet. And I, I will have links below. I will link each chapter and which Pasuk I mentioned so you can look at it yourselves. So this one is from chapter I said Ayin Chet, which is um, 78. And it is Pasuk Yud Chet. Vayin Nasu El B'Levavchem L'Shol Ochel Nafsham. Then tested Hashem in their hearts by requesting food for their cravings. So when it says about testing Hashem in their hearts, the complaining manner in which the Jews demanded meat rather than praying to God for it showed their lack of faith in His ability. When one truly believes in Hashem, concerned for His needs and His ability to provide them, he realizes that whatever Hashem withholds is not due to any inability on His part. Rather, it is because of Hashem's supreme understanding of what is best for Him in every situation. So, when Hashem withholds something from us, we are not allowed to say that he, we are lacking faith in His ability because there is a reason for it. Hashem only withholds things from us because it's for our benefit. So we have to remember that. And remember that everything Hashem does is for the very best. So I hope you enjoyed these, what I call Tehillim uh, treasury tidbits, or t tidbit treasuries, they're actually treasuries, they're very treasured for us because David HaMelech is very profound and his prayers that he said that he made up his Tehillim we can all learn from every day something new so I wanted to just share those specific ones with you and I hope that may we all merit with everything that we do to get closer to Hashem and to do what is good that we that we will see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days Amen. Thanks for watching.